Welcome to the series on UGC Geography Paper 3 for June 2014. We would be solving all the questions that came in Paper 3 for June 2014. There are a total of uh, 75 questions that are asked in Paper 3. So what we would be doing is we would be discussing 15 questions in one go. So let's start with the first 15 set of questions. So the first set of questions or the first question that was asked was the lateral planation theory of pediment formation was proposed by here the correct answer is Gilbert so Gilbert was the person who proposed this theory then this theory was later on so first per person to propose this theory was Gilbert it was promoted by Johnson and then later on it was elaborated or it was talked in more detail by Sharp and Hobart. So these are some of the important persons you must remember for this theory. It was a direct question based on your basic knowledge. Then the next question is matching the book with the author. So here is the list of books and the authors. So what you have to do is match who wrote which book. So outline of geography we'll talk about first the outline of geography was written by Woolridge and Morgan then physical geography as we all know is a popular uh, book written by Strahler then we have essays in geography this book was written by Dewey and fin finally the topic on geomorphology or the book on geomorphology by Lubeck so these were the correct responses for this question again this was one of the direct questions that was asked the next question is a bit conceptual question and the question is based on what is fault line scrap. So let's understand what is fault line scrap and what, which of the following is the best statement to understand a fault line scrap. So basically a fault line scrap is a cliff or escarpment that results due to er erosion of soft rock mm, that, uh, that, has, that is being faulted against the hard rock. So it's basically hard rock and soft rock and that soft rock is being faulted against the hard rock and that place develops as a fault line scrap. So it is basically poor correlation between the rock resistance and the topographic forms. That is one of the correct matches in this question. The next question is a very direct question. Uh, about geomorphology. So we would be talking about various relief features or uh, features that are formed by various actions. So Petronaster Lake is one of the beautiful lakes, uh, series of braided lakes. So it's basically a series of glacial lakes that are connected to a single stream and that are mainly formed by glacial graph. So it's like this is the stream going on and this is the lake and this is the stream then you have the lake. So it's basically a series of glacial lakes. The next question you have matched up point. This is a very difficult or I should say a less explored area of geography that people talk about. This is theories of caravan formations. Now theories of caravan formation there are various theories that people usually discuss. First is the water table theory. This theory was given by Swinerton and Swinerton in this theory what he tried to explain that because of the fast moving water uh, the water table basically becomes responsible for solution of most of the caves. So the solution of the caves is due to the rapid flow of water and that is the water table theory. Next is the concept given by Gardner and Gardner gave the concept of static water zone theory. Under this concept, he talked about that there are permeable strata which initiate the groundwater movement. So because of the permeable water, uh, permeable rock, the water seeps in and that creates uh, the starting point or the initiation for solution of caves or caverns. So caverns means caves. The next concept was given by Mallard and Mallard gave the concept of invasion theory. Under this concept, what he discussed was most of the caves or the development of caves just takes place above the water table. 
and uh, that place is basically the area of highest velocity. So above the water table, you have the groundwater velocity which is the highest and because of that, what happens is development of caves takes place. And finally, the two cycle theory, this was given by Davis. And Davis in his two cycle theory, what he tried to do is, he tried to explain two concepts. First was the initiation of cave uh, that led to enlargement uh, below the water table and second was the development uh, can occur only when water table is lowered. So first thing is formation of the cave, uh, cave initiation or cave formation and then is lowering of the water table so that uh, the cave development takes place. So these were the theories of cave formation given by respective scholars and their concepts. Now, again an interesting question related to glacial features. So here which of the following process is a typical to glacial erosion? Now the correct answer here is plucking. Plucking is a phenomena which is also known as squaring. I'll write here. It's also known as squaring. So what happens in plucking is basically uh, the above part from where the glacier starts. Okay, it, The glacier moves down the valley and the point where it starts is the zone of plucking. So with this diagram it becomes very very clear. So as you can see in this diagram, what is happening is this region is the zone of plucking from where the glacier starts and where the glacier, basically this formation is where the lakes forms, we call it Tarn Lakes and finally you have the zone of aberration towards the end. The next question is the question on assertion reason. Now this is one of the very direct conceptual but direct, comparatively direct question. Deep chemical decay of rock is one of the outstanding features of humid tropical region. Intensity of chemical weathering depends on water and high temperature. Now, whenever we talk about chemical weathering, what is most important? When a chemical will react to a, a certain product, a certain thing. So we call, we say Chemical weathering is basically breakdown of rocks due to reaction of the minerals with water or atmosphere and this is intensified under two conditions. First is high temperature, the reaction becomes fast and second when there is lot of water. So you have abundance of water and high temperature so that's the correct reason to increase the intensity of chemical weathering and once the intensity is increased because of this, it would cause deep decay of the rock and this feature of, is a typical feature of humid tropical region. That means assertion is correct, reason is correct and reason is the correct explanation for assertion. Now this is one of the direct questions that, that is asked, direct but difficult. So you must be ready with each and every small terms. So Crickman proposed the term known as pen plane and that is basically the planes that are form, uh, formed of flood planes which are joined by their own growth. So all the flood planes which are developing are joined by their own growth and that region is known as pen plane. And this term was give, given by Crickman while uh, Davis gave the term penny plane. The next question is, this is a question in most of the books you, if you try to find the answer for this question, you would be unsuccessful. But this tells us that we should refer and read pictures in the book or diagrams in the book very carefully. Now what is the correct sequence of the cloud types in water front, in warm front from its trailing edge? Trailing edge means the end edge and here is the diagram. So here is a diagram of what we call as warm front. So this is the trailing edge of the warm front and from the trailing edge we can just by looking at the diagram get to know the correct sequence is nimbostratus, autostratus, cirrostratus and cirrus. So D is the correct option. So D is the correct choice. So what does we get to know from this? that for geomorphology or physical geography diagrams are very very important. Some of the things you get to know only by visualizing the diagrams. You don't have to read the theory. You don't have to waste or put in extra efforts 
reading a lot of theory and then only you can score marks. This question you would not find in most of the theories, but with the help of diagram you can understand such questions very nicely. The next question is, these are some of the important terms that one comes across and must be familiar with. Macro, uh, macro atmospheric motions are those which occur over a very large area. So the most common examples for this are westerlies and trade winds. So these are what are known as macro phenomena. Then you have uh, a smaller than macro scale circulation which is known as weather map. You have weather map which is smaller to macro circulation. And then you have micro scale circulations. Micro scale circulations you would be talking about uh, gust, dust devils or local wind loops that develop. So these are all micro scale phenomena which are in the uh, basically local and uh, confined to a specific place. The next question is matching the list. So I'm, what I'm doing for these questions is I'm just considering the list. Uh, if you have the quotes with you, what happens is it becomes much more easier because if you know even two of those, then you can guess, okay, C, B and C can be the option because the rest of the options do not match. So which layer contains ozone? The correct answer is stratosphere. Temperature falls with height. This is troposphere. The lowermost layer is troposphere. Then you have the layer of tropopause. Above that you have a stratosphere. Okay, so basically um, you have fall in temperature that stops in tropopause, and you reflect the radio waves back to Earth in ionosphere. So that's the match for reflecting radio waves back to Earth. The next question talks about albedo. What is albedo? Have you you must have talked about albedo while talking about climatology and sun and everything. So albedo basically is the reflectivity or the reflective quality of any surface. So it's expressed as basically the percentage of reflected insulation uh, to the incoming solar radiation. So if there is 100% absorption, albedo will be zero. And if there is 100% reflection, albedo will be 100%. So as the sun angle declines, what happens is reflection increases. How? So sun angle, if it is lower, there would be greater reflection. The reason primarily owes to the fact that the energy coming from the low sun angle is not very strong. So if the sun angle is low, the energy is not very strong. And since it's not very strong, it tries to reflect back. Similarly, if you have a smoother surface, then the reflection would be more as compared to rough surface. The next question is, seasonal contrast and pressure is uh, between land and sea causes. So seasonal contrast in pressure between land and sea, that's high pressure, low pressure differences causes land and sea bridges. bridges uh, breeze. Then you have the next question as the Jerkine's model. Jerkins model, basically V. Jerkins and his son Jerkins together gave the concept of mid-latitude cyclones. Under this, they talked about formation of cyclone, generation of cyclone, its intensification and finally its decay. So basically they talked about the life cycle of the mid-latitude cyclones. His, this concept was further strengthened with the idea of fronts and air mass boundaries. So he talked about fronts and air mass boundaries and together his concept was known as Norwegian cyclone model. And the final question that we would be discussing today is which of the following is correct among the following? So the first statement itself shows a correct explanation. So cold fronts are marked by triangular spikes. So whenever we talk about a weather, weather map, uh, and we talk about cold front, we try to identify a line which is marked by triangular spikes. So these are pointing in the direction of the frontal movement. So wherever uh, you find the spike of it, that is the direction of the 
frontal movement and it's basically along any advancing uh, air mass. So these were the first 15 set of questions that we talked about today. We will be discussing further set of questions in the next four lectures of the series. Hope you find this section useful. And this paper, specifically paper 3, was much more conceptual as compared to paper 2. Paper 2 was basically direct questions. Some of the direct questions were difficult, but most of them were easier. But in this section, a lot of concepts were conceptual and also based on um, uh, core concepts. But those core concepts were not easily uh, found or, or are not very easy, uh, readily available. So you have to have a very strong knowledge and command on your subject before you appear for paper three. Have a good day and we'll be discussing the next set of questions in the coming lessons. Enjoy.